Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another beautiful day of Film Club. Look at Groot. Isn't he handsome? We love Groot around here. What's up, everybody? It's me again, Carson Higgins. We're here for another one of our weekly kind of review solo discussions, as they've become, of our pick this week, which was a, a Jacques Demy film, our second that we've watched in this club. We watched The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Man, I never feel confident saying the title of that movie, and I don't feel very confident about saying the one that we watched this week, The Young Girls of Rochefort. What's up? If you look at it and it looks like Rockefort to you, you're not alone. I was telling people, I was like, hey, are you going to watch the movie this week, The Young Girls of Rockefort? And then I watched the movie last night. First of all, loved it. Second of all, I'm watching it, and I, I hear, you know, I'm reading the subtitles, but I'm hearing them say, Rochefort or something. I, don't, I, I, I would love to speak French, but I don't. Anyway, we watched, let's see if I got this. Les Demoiselles, Les Roche. Oh man, I don't know how to speak French. Anyway, man, it was such a good movie. It's, you guys, The Young Girls of Rochefort. Let's just, I know how to say it. It's really good. Uh, I was looking forward to watching it after watching Umbrellas uh, several months ago now. Um, but yeah, the, Jacques Demy made these two marvelous musicals in the middle of the 60s, early mid 60s, and uh, very influential on films like La La Land. If you're a La La Land person and you haven't seen these Jacques Demy films, you must. Because even I, at the time of La La Land's release, I was like, oh, it's a classic Hollywood musical, like Singing in the Rain. No, it's like Umbrellas of Cherbourg and The Young Girls of Rochefort. Um, it is a rated G musical with music that is divine by Michel Legrand. He did the score for Umbrellas as well. And it was also the only Oscar nomination for this film was for best score for Michel Legrand. And uh, if you like jazz, uh, you should listen to his music. He's got great music that isn't a uh, score from film, even though he did write a lot of music for film and Yentl is another one. Um, so he is awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's literally, if you've ever enjoyed a summer day or candy or ice cream or smiling or laughing or having a good time or uh, it's basically just, you know, it's it's pure happiness in a two hour pill where if you put this movie on the screen, it's just beautiful colors, exquisite music, uh, wonderful interweaving romantic storylines. Uh, it's very French. Uh, which we'll get to in a little bit about uh, how that's good and bad. <laughs> uh, if you are French, you might say, it's not bad at all, fuck you. Uh, but I will say that, you know, sometimes uh, the French's idea of romance, though it is rich and beautiful, sometimes it's fucking sad. <laughs> I'm just going to come out and say it. Sometimes it is. My One of my very favorite romances of all time is Cyrano de Bergerac. And similarly to this romance, it's a lot of missed misread cues and uh you know miss glances and ah oh, you just missed her and which is it, it, it always makes for such good romance but you'll see if you haven't watched this film you'll see you may see what i'm talking about but um it stars the beautiful catherine Deneuve. <laughs> i really don't know how to speak any of these people's names but her and her sister her real life sister play sisters in this movie and they live in rochefort and these guys roll into town in the carnival. One of the guys, who I call the orange guy, because one of them's in an orange shirt and the other one's in a blue shirt. All the pastel colors are amazing. But if you recognize orange shirt, it's because he's uh, Bernardo from West Side Story. He won an Academy Award for being in that movie, and he's in this, and he's awesome. He's so dark and scary or whatever and rough and tough in West Side Story, and in this, he's like just fucking suave and awesome. You're gonna love it. Uh, the the sisters are so good. I fell in love with Catherine Deneuve in uh, Umbrellas of Cherbourg, and uh, luckily before I watched this one, Young Girls of Rochefort, I I knew that it was her real life sister in the film. And I'm watching it last night. I'm watching this movie, and I was like, man, the sister is every bit as good as Catherine Deneuve. I wonder why she didn't become a movie star, or if she did become a movie star. And so I went to look her up. And she tragically died in a car accident like 
just months after the release of this movie. So it came out in 66 or 67, and she died in a car accident at 25 years old. And I, I found that out after I watched the movie, but I was just like, she absolutely, especially given the career that her sister had, uh, she would have been a humongous star. And so it's it was one of those things where I was so sad to find out that she doesn't get to have this illustrious career. But at the same time, I was so glad to discover her and find her in this movie and and be able to put these pieces together because she she just was so, so good. Um, but yeah, like I like I was saying, it's a lot of misconnections in this little romance. Uh, one of the first couple of songs in it is this sailor uh, who has just like the most bright blonde hair ever and like just this adorable <laughs> it's a naval uniform but it looks like one of those outfits that you wear you put on a baby for like a photo shoot anyway he sings this beautiful song about how he he like can't love anybody because he fell in love with this woman in a painting that he painted yeah that he painted uh it's this woman he's never met it's his what does he call her or her his feminine ideal and he sings about her and about how He'll never find anyone like her. Little does he know, his feminine ideal is Catherine Deneuve. So it's going to be a great movie. You know that. I mean, the first scene is this cool bridge thing where they do the coolest, like, fossy dance. There's no singing. It's just dancing. And they're just being cool and just having a good day riding the ferry bridge thing across the river. And I turn to my girlfriend and my mom, who I watched the movies with last night, like 10, 15 minutes into it. And I was like, oh, I'm, I love this. Like, I'm going to love this movie. And I hope you did too. Or maybe if you haven't watched it, you're going to love it because you're good. I'm telling you, it's so good. They break the fourth wall and they sing right to us, which is really fun. Um, yeah, man, I'm obsessed with the colors. It's, it's like Wes Anderson, eat your heart out. <laughs> you could tell it's, it's so cool. It's like, uh, you could tell where La La Land has borrowed a lot from Jacques Demy. You can tell where Wes Anderson has borrowed a lot from Jacques Demy. And yet it also feels like he was borrowing from Jacques Tati or somebody like that. I don't know. I just love how cinema is so incestuous in a really beautiful, not disgusting way. Um, but there's also the coolest cameo ever. And it winds up not being a cameo because he's just a straight up character in the film. But he kind of comes in later uh and he's such a, a delight to see show up. Gene Kelly pops up on screen. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, Gene Kelly's in this fucking movie? And he's speaking French. And you're like, oh, yeah, he was in American in Paris. Of course he speaks French. And of course this guy's here. And he bumps into uh, Catherine Deneuve's sister. And uh, he sings this great song and dances this great dance and interacts with these town kids. And it's definitely, you know, it's it's really odd to hear because it's some French guy singing. It's not Gene Kelly singing. That's not how they did it back in the day. But it's also not the voice that you're familiar hearing in things like Singing in the Rain or American in Paris. So all of a sudden you're like, who the hell is singing for Gene Kelly? Uh, but God, he's still so good. I think he was like in his 50s. He was like 53, I want to say, at the at doing this movie. And he's every bit as good as he's ever been. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. Gene Kelly is incredible. And if you didn't know that he's in this movie, how fun is that? Gene Kelly's in this movie. I also found out uh, Jacques Demy uh, wanted to have, as the sisters, wanted to cast Bridget, Bridget, Bridget Bardot and Audrey Hepburn as the sisters. And I'm like, this would have been such a, almost like Quentin Tarantino way of doing a movie with Gene Kelly in it and, and these women. And then uh, it just, I, I was so impressed and so happy the whole time it just oozes joy and if you can't tell by how i've been talking about it for almost 10 minutes i clearly liked it um yeah i i dare i say it's like maybe maybe my favorite movie musical that i've seen i'll have to give it some time to marinate and i'll have to rewatch some of my other favorites but i don't know Groot. i think it i think it might be like my favorite movie musical his mind's blown um yeah there's a really weird part of the storyline where there's like this sadist murderer <laughs> stabby guy and it's very darkly french i guess and humorous uh man i'm going all over the place but i am gonna make a connection real quick to umbrellas of cherbourg i found it interesting that in that the main character one of his big issues is that he's going off to war and he's just fallen in love and he doesn't want to leave uh 
And in this, we have our sailor who's about to go off to war and doesn't want to leave. Uh, or he does want to leave. Either way, it's I, I found it cool that they were kind of similar. There's even a whole part where uh, people are talking about Cherbourg for some reason. They met somebody or something. And, and I was like, oh, man, I know that there's a connection being made to the previous film. And I'm not fully able to absorb it. A, because I've only seen Umbrellas of Cherbourg the one time. And God... I really, if I spoke French, I know that I would enjoy both of these movies so much more. So many more of the rhymes in the singing would be that much more clever uh, and playful. Um, but yeah, I'm just obsessed. I'm in love. Another fun fact, filmmaker Agnes Varda. You heard of her? Cleo from 5 to 7 is a big movie that she's famous for directing. She is Jacques Demy's wife. And she's in this movie. She's a nun. There's a, a brief moment where a group of nuns go into the music shop and she's one of them. <laughs> she was like, she worked on the film. She even made a documentary called 25 Years After the Young Girls or whatever. It's like a retrospective of the making of the film. I'm telling you, man, this movie totally caught me off guard and made me so happy. Uh, so I hope that you get a chance to watch it if you hadn't already, because otherwise you just watched a crazy person gush about a movie you've never seen before. Um, but yeah, I'm just... I'm really tickled. I'm glad that we watched it. Oh my God, the rhyming scene. I, I, okay, I got to talk about this one last thing and then I swear to God, I'll leave you alone. There's a great scene where there's like a dinner with almost all the, not all, a handful of main characters having dinner together. And it's not a song, but they speak in rhyme. It's almost like they're rapping at each other, but it's all very casual. And if I wasn't listening carefully or reading carefully, I don't think I totally would have picked up on it. But there's like an anti-song song in the middle of this musical. And uh, yeah, if you're a musical theater writer or lover at all, uh, you got to see this movie. You must see this movie. It, you just just do it. Maybe watch Umbrellas of Cherbourg first, but maybe don't. I don't know. It's up to you. Do whatever you want. We pick movies every week. This is this week's movie. We're gonna pick another movie tomorrow. If you want to follow us on Filmstruck Film Club, uh, you know at at Filmstruck Film Club on Instagram, and Facebook. That's where I'm going to post about the new movies. Every week, I'm always going to let you know about it. And then every week, I'm going to post a video to YouTube and to those other things, just like this one. And we'll talk about the movie that we watch. But it's so fun, man. It's like being in a book club, but with movies. So it's much easier to do. Uh, so yeah, hit me up. Let me know if there's a movie you want to watch or a director that you're curious about. Uh, or if you're like, hey, Carson, I want to see all the movies that you've watched so far, how do I look at those? Well, the easiest way is to go to Letterboxd, but the easiest, easiest way is it's the top announcement in the Facebook group for Filmstruck Film Club. You can just click the Letterboxd link. It's also in my bio there on Instagram, Letterboxd. Boom, click that, and it'll bring you to Filmstruck Film Club, what we've watched so far, and it'll show you everything. Check it out, and God, just, man, right? The Young Girls of Rochefort. That can't be how you say it, but here we are. I love you guys. I'll put another pickup, and we'll uh, we'll keep this going. But it's great to see you. I'm glad you were here. Root's really glad you were here. So, yeah, catch you later.